Hello, I am Ji Ha Lim from Halim University Dong Tan Sacred Heart Hospital, Department of Radiology. The title I'll present today is COVID-19 Vaccine Related Accelerated Lymphadenopathy in Breast Cancer Patients, Case Series with a Review of Literature. For introduction, after developing vaccine of pandemic COVID-19, Massive rollout of vaccine against COVID-19 administration has started worldwide. And along with that, favorable effect as well as adverse effect of the vaccine has been demonstrated. According to CDC, local adverse effects are pain, redness, swelling, and systemic adverse effects are tiredness, headache, muscle pain, chills, fever, and nausea. Vaccine-related lymphadenopathy of any kind has been rather rare, with a few reported cases from influenza, HPV, smallpox, BCG, and measles vaccines. However, lymphadenopathy reports after COVID-19 vaccine administration has been gradually increasing, mostly in the axilla and neck areas, if the lateral to vaccine injection side of the arm. So the purpose of this study is to differentiate COVID-19 vaccine-related LAP from malignant LAP by analyzing imaging and clinical features from early cases of axillary LAP shown in various COVID-19 vaccine recipients with history of breast cancer. We compared radiologic features of the vaccine-related LAP from well-known imaging features of malignant LAP, which are round shape, irregular margins, maximum cortical thickness equal or more than th 3 mm on ultrasound, length-wide ratio less than 1.5 on CT and or MRI, eccentric cort focal cortical thickness equal or more than 2 times on CT and or MRI. And we also analyzed an atomic level of axilla involved and multiplicity of the lipanopathy. These are abbreviations I use in this presentation. As a result, the range age ranged from 61 to 75 years old. None of the patients complained of symptoms and signs regarding axillary lymphadenopathy shown in the imaging exams. Cancer types were mostly IDC and TNM stage were mostly early. Vaccine types the patient received were AstraZeneca in four patients, Pfizer in one patient, and cross inoculation of AstraZeneca and Pfizer in one patient. For the radiologic features of LAP, round shape and, irregu in, and irregular cortical margins were less frequently observed in COVID-19 vaccine-related lymphadenopathy, whereas maximal co cortical thickness more than 3 mm were noted in all of the cases. Length-to-wide ratio less than 1.5 was noted in most of the cases, more than double the focal cortical thickening compared with the prior imaging study was observed in 83% of the cases. Multiple lymph node enlargement was more likely than singular lymph node enlargement in this group of enrolled patient. For the first case, a 61-year-old woman with a history of right breast cancer with ipsilateral axillary lymphometastasis. She received appropriate treatment and came to our institution for her five-year follow-up. She claimed to have her first dose of AstraZeneca in the left arm 22 days before the imaging study. 
Here is our breast MRI study. In left axillary area, multiple lymph node enlargement is noted, which is significantly noticeable compared with prior MRI performed a year ago. She wanted a pathology confirmed, so ultrasound guided 14 gauge gun biopsy was proceeded. The res result was a res benign reactive hyperplasia. For case number two, a 75 year old woman with history of right breast cancer with no axillary metastasis came to our facility for a 22.5 year follow up after treatment. She received the first and second dose of Pfizer in her left arm. Last dose was administrated about 19 days before the ultrasound. In current MRI studies, multiple lymph node enlargement are noted in her left axillary level 1 and 2. Ultrasound guided biopsy resulted in reactive hyperplasia, benign. A 73-year-old woman with history of left breast cancer with no axillary metastasis visited our hospital for her 10-year surveillance. This time, she only performed mammography and ultrasound without CT or MRI. She received cross-inoculation of AstraZeneca and Pfizer in 11 weeks interval. Her last dose was administrated about one month before the ultrasound study. We observed round enlarged lymph nodes in our right axilla, which are not noted in our prior follow-up images a year ago. We suggested three-month follow-up with axilla ultrasound study, assuming this is a benign COVID-19 vaccine-related finding, which the patient agreed on. This will be the last case I'll be presenting today. A 61-year-old woman with history of left breast cancer with ipsilateral axillary lymphoid metastasis. She had her first dose of AstraZeneca vaccine about a month before the hospital visit for a three-year follow-up exam. CT and MRI and breast ultrasound all showed new lymphoid enlargement in her left axillary level 1. She was also advised to come back for a short-term follow-up, assuming these are benign findings. Even with the correct clinical history of COVID-19 vaccine administration, in oncologic patient, even a little change in the axillary lymph nodes are alarming for radiologists and clinicians, especially in breast cancer, melanoma, and lymphoma patients. In our case series, among the radiology features known to be favorable for malignancy, COVID-19 vaccine-related benign hyperplasia of axillary lymph nodes showed more than these features. Here, and showed less of these features. Pardon me for too many words in one slide. Publication on the lymphadenopathy of COVID-19 vaccine is now so many that as of early October 2021, there are over 80 articles about this phenomenon, and majority of them are in the forms of case reports and series dealing with less than 10 cases each. According to these reports, instance of lymphadenopathy is considered rather often now as the evidence accumulated over the years and anticipated to be much more common in subclinical degree. 
these lymphadenopathy is likely to be observed more often in younger ages over older ages and in female groups over male groups. Lymph node enlargement could persist over 11 weeks on imaging studies. SBI firstly stated proper assessment and management guidelines in the breast radiologic field, followed by CSBI endorsement. And EU SOBI updated 10 more practical and encompassing proposals in managing lymphadenopathy, which includes the follows. Vaccine injection in the cancer-free arm, vaccination data collection for breast imaging referrals, routine imaging at least 12 weeks after the last vaccine dose, emphasis on overall nodal metastatic risk in the patient with breast cancer and multi multidisciplinary team approach for complex or unclear cases. For conclusion, this is one of the earliest support on AstraZeneca-related axillary lymphadenopathy with pathologic correlation and is the very first document about AstraZeneca and Pfizer cross-inoculation case. Oncologists as well as radiologists should be familiar with the fact that COVID-19 vaccines, regardless of the vaccine type or dosage, can frequently cause ipsilateral axillary lymphadenopathy longer than anticipated period of time so that both over and under diagnosis can be avoided. Thank you for listening.